When you connect, what you're going to see up in this corner are lights to describe your connection. What happens is, if you're connecting to a vehicle, Bluetooth is turned on and creates that connection with the vehicle tracking unit that we have installed in the vehicle. And you'll see a blue light for that here. The information you collect with the app travels from the app to that tracking unit and sends in via the cell and satellite signal that we use to track your regular vehicle tracking information. Now, we are automatically going to try and connect you to the last vehicle you were connected with the last time you drove. If you wish to connect to a different vehicle, there is a menu up in this right-hand corner. And clicking connect to vehicle will let you search for someone new to connect to. At the top of my page here, it says my name, logbook driver one in the training department. And it says demo mode where you're going to see the name of your vehicle. I need to bring up here that you don't need to connect to a vehicle in order to come into this page. If you're doing work away from your vehicle, like you're doing paperwork or loading the vehicle up in the morning. You don't need to have the vehicle turned on first thing. You can log on while connected or while away from your vehicle, and you can start on this driver dashboard to change your statuses. Now today we're gonna to be talking about the national rule set. And that rule set is going to show you three different statuses you can change into. Those are being off duty, on duty and in sleeper berth. Now, if you're away from your vehicle and you go on duty, because we can't record the location information from your vehicle, we are going to ask you to provide that and any other relevant trip information. So, we're going to add in here a location. You all saw that I have another status here, which is driving. As a driver, you will not actually see that status in your tablet. Now the reason for that is when you do connect to a vehicle and you're on duty, as soon as that vehicle starts to record movement, the tablet is gonna switch you automatically into driving mode. Once you're stopped for two minutes, it'll automatically switch you back to being on duty. The reason we do it like this is that the data is coming directly from your vehicle's engine, so it does tend to be more accurate. It's something you can't forget to do. It also means that you're hands-free while you're driving. And I'm gonna switch into driving mode today just so that we record some information. This time I'll skip putting in the location data though. Now the next part of your dashboard is all of your time clocks. Daily driving time under the national rule set is 11 hours of allowed driving. So as your driver uses that up, the circle around the time used here is going to fill up in green. If you get within half an hour of a violation, however, that circle is going to turn orange. So it is a very clear warning to you. Daily on duty time for the national rule set is 14 hours. So this clock is going to track the same thing for that amount of time. And then you have your weekly on duty time available. You're either working a seven day, 60 hour work week or an eight day, 70 hour work week. In this case, we're doing the eight day. So this clock is gonna look like the others here. It'll build up in green and turn orange if you get close to having a violation. But in the na national rule set, there is a 34 hour reset period that is required every week. That means your driver must be off duty for 34 straight hours, including two periods of 1 a.m. through 5 a.m. What that does is it resets them to start their new week. So this can only happen and be used as a reset once. However, if they do not take that entire reset, we simply start counting from where we left off. 
So that is certainly something that can cause a violation. Now, if there is any kind of violation that happens, we do have a pop-up that comes up on the screen and tells your driver what kind of violation that is. We also have a clock here to track the 10 hours you should be off duty during the day. And the last clock is a smaller one up here. National rule set drivers are required to take one half hour break after eight hours of being on duty. So this is going to count up that eight hours for you. When your driver goes off duty for their break, it's going to recount. It's going to count down the half hour until they can start working again. Now, something I'm going to recommend here is that if you're working unconnected to your vehicle and you're sitting there off duty, don't go, up, go directly from off duty mode to driving. Go to on duty and then to driving. That just makes sure that all the timers reset themselves correctly. We do see some issues if that doesn't happen. Before we move off of this page, I do have a few other small things I want to mention. One of them is the little vehicle up in this corner. If you click on that, you can enter in a trailer number for your vehicle. So if you're switching trailers during the day, this can be very helpful in staying caught up with your information. And I also want to go back to our menu. We've talked here about the connect to vehicle option. What you can do here also is you can show the time remaining versus the time used, if that's your personal preference. There's also the option here to add a remark. You can do this with any current status that is up on the page. So you can add in relevant trip information. You can't do that in driving mode, however, because again, the tablet should be hands-free. There is also a button here for extending driving time by two hours. That is only allowed in the adverse conditions exception. So if there are unpredictable traffic or weather issues, this can be used. However, extending your driving time cannot violate the 14 hours of allowed on duty time. So that is our driver dashboard. The main menu for your tablet and your app should be up in this left-hand corner. Mine is a little bit cut off. But there are several other pages here. One of the features we offer is for co-drivers. If you have two drivers co-driving the same vehicle, they can each track their own dashboard. There's also a space in here to put in your shipping reference, a description of what you're transporting. And you simply do that by hitting the plus button up in the corner here. Now, this can be a bill of lading, a reference number of some sort, or simply a description. So let's say that we're going to be shipping fleet matic units. What you'll find here is that the start date automatically sets as today with an end date of tomorrow. You can click on either of these dates to change them. So I could expand my information out to January if I wanted. Let's say we're going to be shipping Fleet Maddox units through January 10th. When I hit done, you'll find that that adjusts my end date. And then I can save this right into the system with everything else. Now this means you can put shipping references in here ahead of time. You can put in shipping references that overlap. And you can put in shipping references that run for a very, very long period of time. In our main menu, we also have a few parts of the system here that you need to be able to show if your vehicle is ever stopped. Now, the first part of this is your status log. In your status log, what we have 
is each update that has come in today. And you can go back the seven or eight days of your work week, as well as see your total information so far. Now we have information here. We've put in address information a couple of times. But if we'd like to add additional remarks here, it's easy to do so. You would simply click on the status information, and that pulls the page where you can again add remarks. Now this data is available as a log, but that log is also available as a graph. This is probably similar to the paper logs that you're used to keeping. And we do encourage you to keep those paper logs alongside of this for a week or two. It's due technology. We understand it does take some getting used to. Also, be aware, per the DOT, you must always have a blank paper log in your truck. It's a backup. If this tablet gets broken or stolen, you have a paper log you'll be able to fill out if that's the instance. Now, another part of the app you need to be able to show is your vehicle inspections. Unfortunately, I cannot pull this up today because I'm not connected to a real vehicle. I'm only connected to my computer. But I do have a PDF file here with some examples of what this part of the app looks like. Now, when you pull up a vehicle inspection, tied to the app that you're using are the past 50 vehicle inspections, or the past seven days' worth on your vehicle. So you can come in here and actually go back and look at the different inspections that have been run. We give you the general details, state, truck, trailer, driver name. And down at the end here, we'll tell you if there were defects reported in red, or we'll show you blue if there were no defects. And if you click on that defect, you can actually see what the notes were on it. Of course, this is also the part of the app where you actually run the report. So at the top, when you choose to add a vehicle inspection report, what we do is we pull up your name and your truck and trailer. And we ask you whether or not you found defects. Our app does provide a very basic vehicle inspection guide. It's going to include the items required in a checklist by the DOT. We find that a lot of companies have extra pieces they need to add on to this for something specific, so we do encourage you to get a paper copy of the list your company requires. Now, whether or not you find defects, there is a space to essentially put in remarks. And those get sent in to a very specific part of the website so your manager can actually review them. All right. Now back on the app, I really want to touch on the settings section here. Oops, not logging out. In settings, you have an assortment of information that was put in by your manager on the website when they created the logbooks information for your company. Things like your DOT number, your carrier name, and your home terminal. This information sets up the hours you are allowed to track in different parts of the app. The only thing you may need to change in here would be the time zone. This should always remain in the time zone of your home location. So, if you're traveling across the country but your company is from Massachusetts, this should always be an Eastern time. There are a couple of important pieces of information to show you here in settings, and most of them come from this menu in the upper right-hand corner. If a manager ever calls you and they mention that you are not sending in updates, Something that can likely happen is that your vehicle is simply traveling through a spot where there's not strong enough cell or satellite reception. If you go into the app diagnostic data, it'll say status change upload pending. And the number here 
reflects the number of statuses you've changed that have not gone into the website yet. Now that data is stored here. So as soon as your vehicle connects again via satellite, the information will be forwarded in and it will be backloaded. Now also in this menu, we have something called your Fleetmatics diagnostic file. If there are ever any issues that you cannot figure out, something that you think needs to be changed, one of the things you can do is you can reach out to our customer support uh, team. You can get their information from your manager. And you can simply upload via meaning send us your Fleetmatics diagnostic file. Along with this, we do need to know the date and the time of any issues, but that will make it much easier for our support team to give you assistance. Now, the last thing that I want to mention here is logging out. Frequently, something that we see happening is drivers being on duty at the end of their day and going, off, going and logging out of their tablet and going home. The issue with that is when you log off, you stay in whatever status you're currently in. So if you leave yourself on duty, go home and come back the next morning, you are going to have a very large violation. It is very, very important that you go off duty. Doing the same thing again, go off duty. Now, if you're still connected to your vehicle, the tracking unit in your vehicle only updates every 90 seconds. So you'll want to give it a minute or two to make sure that last update goes into your offices. If you are away from your vehicle, when you go off duty, that status update may not go in until you connect to a vehicle again the next day. So just make sure you are aware of that. So I will go ahead then and log out of our app. That is our training on logbooks. If you have any questions, certainly feel free to talk to your managers or of course, reach out to our support team. Thank you all so much. Have a great day.